Utah Stars, Salt Lake's forgotten WNBA franchise. The year was 1997. Titanic was the biggest movie in the world, Bill Clinton was president and a brand new sports league had just begun play, the Women's National Basketball Association. The WNBA focused on shining a new light on the realm of professional women's basketball. To prepare for its inaugural season, the WNBA awarded eight cities with franchises, New York, Los Angeles, Sacramento, Phoenix, Cleveland, Houston, Charlotte, and Salt Lake City. Yes, that's right Utah used to have its own WNBA franchise. The announcement of Utah's new WNBA team received a wide variety of reactions. Many were excited for the new team, with one even stating that they were a good thing for Utah. Others criticized the new league, with some using statements rooted in sexism to uphold their arguments. Regardless of the public's initial opinions, the WNBA intended to provide a new stage for professional female athletes. Who were the stars? The Utah Stars, whose name paid homage to the American Basketball Association's Utah Stars of the 1970s, called the Delta Center home for six seasons. The Stars got off to a rocky start in their first season, only winning 7 of 28 games and posting the worst record in the league. Heading into the 1998 season, the Stars looked to grow and improve. The Stars were awarded the first overall pick in the 1998 WNBA draft. With this opportunity, the Stars selected Margot Didic. Didic had a remarkable rookie season, putting up 12.9 points, 7.6 rebounds and 3.8 blocks per game. Wendy Palmer went on to have an outstanding year in her second season with the team. She led the team in points for the second year in a row but despite these impressive individual performances, Utah would only improve their record by a single win, which is less impressive when you consider they played two extra games that season. For the 1999 season, the Stars made major changes in a grave effort to see improvement. First and foremost, the Stars drafted former American Basketball League most valuable player Natalie Williams. On top of that, the Stars were able to pick up Adrian Goodson late in the draft. Goodson turned out to be an absolute steal, having a major impact on the Stars' future performance. In July, the team traded Palmer and Olympia Scott to the Detroit Shock, receiving Corey Hlett and Cindy Brown in return. These moves paid off for the Stars, as they earned 15 wins in the 1999 season. They finished the season tied for fourth place in the Western Conference and the thought of a future playoff appearance began to become more realistic. Continuing on their path of improvement, the Stars earned a winning record for the first time in franchise history in the 2000 season. Williams averaged a double-double and led the team in points per game. Goodson had another stellar season and Didic led the team in blocks. With an 18-14 record, the Stars placed fifth in the Western Conference, thus failing to make the playoffs as the league had expanded to 16 teams. If the 2000 Stars had played in the Eastern Conference, they would have been the second best team, only behind the New York Liberty. In 2001, the Utah Stars continued to grow, earning their first playoff appearance. The Stars added another key player in Marie Ferdinand Harris, who averaged 11.4 points per game in her rookie season. Didic, Goodson, and Williams also averaged more than 10 points per game, leading the Stars to a 19-13 season. The Stars faced the Sacramento Monarchs in their first playoff series, where unfortunately the Monarchs, who finished second in the Western Conference, swept the Stars in two games. The Stars completed another great regular season in 2002, winning 20 games and finishing third in the Western Conference. In the playoffs, the Stars faced the Houston Comets in the first round. At this point in time, the Comets had already cemented themselves as a dynasty, winning the first four WNBA championships.